welcome to Chief Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here with my friend Ward Stroud. And today we're gonna to be doing something totally different. This is not in the two minute art tips format. This is the two amigos, man. So we're gonna be doing something completely different. Um, what our, our plan is today is that um, I started a painting and Ward is going to finish it. Ward started a painting and I'm gonna finish it. So we're trading it up, mixing it up. Uh, I'm gonna be using some American Journey and he is going to put some brush magic on this and we are going to make some fun stuff happen. Uh, we're just gonna be talking, yeah. and living, riffing it and uh, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about brush -o. Brusho is an ink and dye based crystal powdered watercolor. And it's been in England, it's been in the UK for about 35 years, but it's new to the US. So we are taking it in this country now and, and making it our own. And all kinds of exciting things are happening. So uh, I'm really excited to be here today. I just want to say up front, thank you to Joe's for the opportunity. And I actually learned a lot about painting from this amazing artist right here. So to be on stage with you doing this is a real thrill. So I hope you all enjoy this. Let's have some fun. Ooh, let's do it. So what are you gonna do first? I think I'm gonna hit the background first. Oh, okay. Just to kinda let some stuff cook. Well, then maybe I'll join you. Uh, I'm gonna do also a background. I, I call this instant foliage. And we have other videos that I've shot on how to do this. But basically, um, backgrounds can be very overwhelming and, it, and daunting at times. So I'm gonna show you how to do a full background on this rather large piece of paper. Uh, quite easily and you'll ha you get a great effect using the brush -o. As always I say it's hard to control the brush -o powder but it's easier to control the water. So by putting the water down first and putting the particles into it I'm going to have much more control over this effect. So I'll get started and you can do this and we're going to have some fun. Yep. First thing I'm doing I'm, I'm really not splattering but I'm dropping just large uh, dollops of water in the background here. And eventually I'll link these dollops together and that's what's going to create the, the foliage. And, and as you can see from when you painted earlier, there's already some ambient particles on the paper and we're already getting some brush -o love. I have to say too, um, you know, when we got together yesterday, we decided what we're going to do and, and you showed up. <laughs> Julie misread the memo. Well, that's all right. You, sho <laughs> she, you showed up this morning with this painting and for never really having done brush -o before, this is an extraordinary piece of work. I, I was so excited when I saw it. Um, yeah, kudos to you. Thanks, man. Hi, oh, you're welcome. I had fun. What a concept, having fun. I know. Painting, hmm. Yeah. I think you're onto something I'm here. A crazy person. So notice uh, as I put this water down, I'm not outlining the background. I mean the, the foreground rather. Well, or the background for that matter. I'm letting my drops go off of the paper and I'm also letting my drops um, cover into the, the main uh, focal point here or, or the central figure because you don't want to get a cut out look. If I, if I drop the drops all around the edge like this, it would, it would look unreal uh, and cut out and you don't want to get that kind of effect. And it's all right if things bleed and blend a little bit. And I actually want a little bit of the, the background to seep into the foreground because it will make the flower look translucent. And I'm going to like be a little bit more rigid about it. I'm kind of not letting the water go into the subject matter exactly because I'm going to let it bleed in later. I want to kind of see what I can get to happen first. Um, and we're going to... Ooh. So this is moss green and this is one of the brush colors. There's 35 colors I believe now. And this is leaf green. One of the things I really love about brush -o is each of these colors has what I call uh, monogamous colors, but I think the real term is an analogous. Uh, anyway, no single color is just one color. Even the black, if you use black brush -o, which I call instant universe, you'll get blacks, but you get reds and blues and purples and all kinds of other particles mixed in it. And you probably notice I'm putting, I'm putting the brush -o on a scratch piece of paper. And the reason I do that is brush -o is very, very powerful. It's like the ghost chili of paint, very vibrant. And if I were to take these canisters and just shake it into the painting, it would obliterate it. And by putting it on a piece of paper first, this is going to allow me to, to transport it more gently into the, 
into the piece. Now I'm just going to take this brush and do what I call connect the drizzles or connect the dollops <laughs> and hopefully this will make it look more like foliage and less like water has been splattered on there. So we're going to give this some vines and some background and again I'm going right through these leaves right off the side of the page so this doesn't look outlined and this doesn't get an outline around it. <laughs> this is crazy I'm painting on Julie's painting. Oh, if I'm dreaming don't pinch me I do not want to wake up. I'm painting fish with board so I'm happy. Yay. There will probably be a spontaneous macarena break out at any <laughs> point in this video just warning you all ahead of time. I am serious though about the opportunity to give back. I learned to paint pretty much watching YouTubes artistically watching you and Joe and all the other amazing artists. So to come here and get to do this for everybody is really it's a super thrill. All right I'm ready to put the brush out in. On a separate piece of scratch paper I put the moss green and the leaf green and I'm going to swizz them around a little bit and then I'm just gently going to tap and let this just unfold. so that I don't overdo it because of course we want to keep those beautiful whites of the paper still coming through. Watercolor is such an amazing uh, medium. And for all of you that are going to ask, this background is laid in with uh, bluestone and shadow so far. So. Two American Journey watercolors, easy to find, easier to love, because they are awesome. Just lovely. And still have enough nice lights and whites coming through. Now I'm just going to gently <laughs> just going to blow on that very gently just to move the particles that didn't get into the water back into the water and just reinforce that foliage a little bit. Now I'm going to take also a tissue here and just dab up. Because Brusho is an ink and dye based paint, it's very staining. And you'll find um, once, once, this, once these particles hit the paper, they're not really going to be going anywhere. So feel free to dab this up. Because you want to, at some point, arrest the particles from spreading out. Because if you leave it long enough and it's, and it's a thick enough uh, consistency, it will turn into a, a homogenous color, uh, just like one, one brown or something. Uh, so it's good to come along. I'll see you right here. I'm, I'm tapping this with the tissue, with the paper towel. And it didn't lift up the paint, but it did pick up the, the big pool of water, which I didn't want to turn into just one solid color because I love this, this varied color here. How's it going over there? Ooh. Stuff's happening. Yay. So what do you think about maybe adding some little particles to your flower petals here? I'm all about it. You're all about it? Mm -hmm. All right. So what are some of the fun things uh, that you've seen come out over the years? Because uh, I know you have a wonderful history here and it must be just extraordinary to see, kind of have a first a front row seat to all <laughs> the fun things and all the amazing artists that come through here. It's been an adventure, like 22 years being associated with the company. So. There's always something cool going on. There's always somebody who has a different way of looking at things mm -hmm. that's awesome, you know. And so uh, it's it's always just cool just to, to meet people and see how that they use materials and stuff. And I've made some good friends over the years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. That dark background is really bringing that fish forward, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yay. Yeah. One of my favorite experiences uh, while I've been here at Joe's was to do a, an employee demo. So they set up in the break room uh, so that I could show everybody what Brescia was all about and give them a, a basic demonstration. And it was, it was really fun. Uh, not only just the celebrities and the owners, but you know, me and the people that work in the back that make the pads and do the wrapping and ship the things out, getting to know everybody and show them like, there's so many things on these shelves here. Brusho is just one of the um, amazing um, things. Uh, and to see it, kind of light bulbs come on. And of course, you were one of the people there. And, and <laughs> right away, you're doing these amazing things. It's just, it's exciting to see. It really is exciting to see. 
Yeah, I kind of love my job, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. Wonderful company. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I do this a lot. Like I play around with the shapes and will often like drag the background into the subject mm -hmm. so that they're not completely disconnected. Not no, cut kinda, out. Yeah, mm -hmm. th they're not unrelated forms. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the petals. I don't wanna do too much. This is such a lovely, it was a lovely painting when I got here before we did the brush out. I love the light in this. Don't imagine there's been a whole lot of new watercolor inventions in the last few hundred years. There's some. Well, quinacridone. I mean, that was a big thing for people to kind of hold on to and understand, get to know. That was a big change. Uh, to have like these vibrant colors that have light fastness and mixability and they're friendly and fun and they work well with what you've already got and that was a big a big change because uh, it took people a while to get used to that thought. Using some gamboge, just a nice yellow and some orange, one of my favorite brush out colors. Well, I have to say gray is my all-time favorite. Uh, again, onto a piece of scratch paper, and then gently, ever so gently, especially on these petals, because they're already amazing, I just want to add little tiny pieces of love. It's already beautiful. And then right here in the middle, just a touch of red. And you can see these particles hit and they're gonna just spread out ever so beautifully. And the water helps it move. I get asked a lot of times, what's your favorite paper for using brush show? And I actually like to use all different kinds of papers. At first I use hot press because it's so smooth it let the water move around. And I think if I were doing aquatic paintings uh, or maybe skies I would use the hot press because of the the fluidity of the of the way the water and the particles interact on it but I've also had amazing results using 300 pound rough paper the the particles get stuck in the tooth of paper they sink in deeper and you get a little bit more texture as you would imagine with a, a rough or a cold press so I would advise you to s experiment with all kinds of different papers and see what your results will be Yay. Well, that's looking great. Yeah, I warned Ward earlier that it'll become a deaf mute when we start painting, so <laughs> like, it's just not uh, where my brain is. So. One of the things you noticed about the way Julie's painting, and I tend to do this too, and because people ask me so much, you know, one of the most requested things I get in workshops is, is how do I paint looser? I want to paint looser. How, I paint so tightly. How do you paint so, so fluidly? And, and the first thing I was telling them is change how you hold your brush. If you're holding your brush like this, if you're choking up like a pencil and doing little tiny brush strokes, and, and, and this is okay if you're doing fine detail, but I, I prefer the, what I call the Harry Potter method, uh, <laughs> where you hold the, the brush almost like a magic wand. I have a friend that says you can tell a painter by where they hold their brush. You know, first, th first through third year painters are like this, four, five, and six are like this, and then you know the seasoned pros they're going to be out here. And anyway, I hope that helps some people out there. And as you guys are seeing live, I'm an incredibly slow painter. I'm very fast. Yeah, yeah, I'm slow. He's faster. So <laughs> we like to think of it as purposeful. Okay, we could call it that. I'm not sure that's what it well, is. Well, listen, but this hasn't been really fair because, I mean, you're, you're doing the lion's share of the work here. Painting into something that's already got brush on it is, is a lot more work than me dropping some particles and some water down. Uh, and that's exactly what Julie's doing. She's having to put in all the values and all the shadows. Or this, I just dropped the water, sprinkles the particles. Look at the beautiful effect. I love it. So brush is owned by a small family in Sheffield, UK. Uh, and they're a lovely, they're a lovely small company. I've had a lot of interaction with them. They've given me a ton of support now over the last few years. Um, and I like to, I mean, I have nothing against big companies, but I, I definitely tend to support the smaller. I love uh, independent little s small companies like Cheap Joe's that, you know, 
you can still call and talk to a real person on the phone. Uh, there really are signs now that I've seen behind the scenes here all around the warehouses and things that truly say, uh, you know, the customer is the boss and, you know, listen more, you know, you've got two ears and we've got one mouth, we listen more and there's just all kinds of old school down home goodness uh, associated with this place. So who wouldn't want to support that? All right, so some of you might be wondering what the noise in the background is as we've been working on this, and we've got a couple minutes to kill, so I'm going to take you around the corner and show you just exactly what's doing it. We'll be back. I'll okay. have fun. All right. Come on. I'll be here. Hi, Edwina. Hi. Awesome. Awesome. Here we go. Oh my gosh, this is just like on Letterman. Remember they did this kind of thing? I'm waiting for Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld to come around the corner any minute. Where are we going? Here it is. Look at all this. This is where all the love comes from. Oh, and there's Amy. Hi, and there's Michael. We're we coming around the corner here. This is how it's all done. This is where it gets real right here. That's right. So it's really not a sea monster, it's actually the shrink wrapper. Right through here is the outlet store. Amazing. Oh, oh, this is the women's bathroom. We don't want to go in there. We're going this way. Down the hall. Bye, shrink wrapper. Ah, oh, I love this place. Oh, wow. All right, we're coming back. Okay. Live from New York. <laughs> Welcome back. Cool. Julie's still painting. Yay. We may have to do this. Uh, A little time lapse. Yeah. Yeah. A little time lapse. Let me. Well, you know, and this. Tighten it up later. Ooh, I love the bloomy. Yeah, I, people don't like that. It, people like avoid that for some reason, and I think they're fascinating. I love those. Yeah, you know, I get all kinds of levels in my workshops, um, students of, of all different degrees, and I, I tell them no matter what your painting turns out like, at least you're trying, at least you're putting your, your heart on the line. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've been approached by people to say, oh, I don't have an artistic bone in my body. I can't draw a stick figure, uh, you know, art. Art just skipped me. My grandmother was a great artist. My father was a great artist, but I just didn't get that gene. I mean, it's kind of sad, really, because I know that, of course, inside of everybody is an artist. You know, your, your art may be, uh, like we were talking about the other day, mm -hmm. it might be poetry, it might be brick lane, it might be music, but I would encourage anybody watching this, anyone at all who thinks, wow, that looks like fun. I, I think I might like to give that a try. If the voices start saying, oh, but know this or know that, don't listen. Pick up a brush, watch a YouTube, basic watercolor 101, go on the Cheap Joe's website, look up their videos on how to get started and just do it. Well, we still have some finishing touches too. I wanna, uh, I wanna do some stems here and little details that'll uh, go in the eyes and yeah. 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 And I need to remove the Revlon lipstick that I just put on this fish. <laughs> It's very kissable. <laughs> it is. He's yeah. so pert and They don't call it fish lips for nothing. No. We're back. Yay. We're still painting. We're going to do the finishing touches now so you can see how this whole project ends up. I'm going to gently paint into this fabulous painting that Julie has done here, adding just a little bit more values because I want to just pop out a little bit. First thing I'm going to do right here in these beautiful flower petals, I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt sienna. And the trick to this is um, using good thick paint, nice dark. See how thick I'm putting that paint in there? Right down to here. And then I can come further away like this with nice clean soft water. Way, way back here, getting this what I call this plow in the field. I'm gonna sneak right up on that and just look what that does. Maybe we'll push this one a little bit further back so this one goes behind this one, right off the edge of the paper. So Julie and I decided that we would donate our paintings to the local um, homeless shelter. What's it called? Hospitality House. The Hospitality House. 
and so we get to do some good sharing with you here today and then the paintings will go on and do some good for the community. We are very lucky to do what we do. Um, anything that you can do to help others and share is the best use of your energy. Well, and goodness knows that the art community uh, and Cheap Joe's, I must say, has done so much for me and for us. So it is good to get back. Well, I hope whoever ends up with these appreciates them. I'm sure they will love them. I hope so. Because they were made in such a fun environment and such a, a, a loving place. I got and a little bit of shadow and transparent oxide brown because, and you can see how I haven't completely mixed them together on the palette, because what I like to do is I'll pick up just a swath and then wherever it lands is wherever it lands. So you get a little bit of this and a little bit of that, stuff happens, you know. One thing leads to another, Yeah. before you know it. It's all good. World peace, end of hunger, goodwill towards man. I heard somewhere once, if you put a little orange in everything it just helps it to pop i actually have a a blues album called you gotta dance with the ones that brung you and it's really part of my central philosophy for life i mean i owe so much to so many people that helped me along the way vicky's one now you're one of them well, that's sweet it's so funny last night my daughter walked into the studio and i was working on my painting she walks in and says what are you doing because i was really intent working on it and stuff and I was like, oh, I'm doing brush -o. And she <laughs> said, what? <laughs> and, uh, where's my mama? Uh, what have you uh, done with her? Did. Yeah, where's <laughs> my tight uh, regimented mom? And uh, I was like, she was like, well, what is that? And I was like, well, here, watch. Just watch this. And so I laid down a puddle and they just told her to grab one of the, the little cans and she started sprinkling and she was like, what? What is happening? This is so great. Okay. Well, thank you guys. It was fun. Are you going to sign it? Yeah, man. Yay. Yay. Well, again, I would just like to say it has been an extraordinary experience and honor to be up here painting. Thank yeah, you for everything that you've awesome. given me over the years and well, everything that you. you've given everybody out there, helping us learn and keeping it um, fun with a big happy heart. And you know, I know art can be a very serious thing, but you always show us that there's joy in what we do too, and that's important. Yeah, So, and thank you so much for coming and being with Absolutely. us. It has been a pleasure. We've had so much fun, and uh, I have had a blast. Yay! Yeah. So thank you for coming.